The alligator is the ultimate predator. Silent and deadly, it lurks in the murky waters of Florida. With its jaws three times more powerful than a grizzly bear's, the alligator fears nothing. The problem is, they live and hunt right in people's backyards. Up to 20 alligator attacks are reported each year in Florida. Some of them are fatal. The only ones standing between these predators and the public are the alligator trappers. Theirs is one of the most dangerous jobs in the world. To tackle this dangerous animal, often with their bare hands. In Florida, alligators can weigh half a ton and can be as long as 14 feet, the size of an average sedan. Charles Carpenter and Chad Wright are licensed alligator trappers. Their job is to act on complaints from citizens by making this predator harmless, because human flesh is all too often part of its meals. Nuisance alligators cannot be relocated because once they have lost their natural fear of man, they will attack wherever they are. Experienced trappers like Chad have all been bitten at least once by these powerful jaws. He almost lost a hand. In this line of work, a careless mistake can have painful, if not deadly, consequences. He can sink the boat. Uh, he can bite through the boat. They've bit through the boats before. We don't own a boat that ain't been bit through. So uh, this one's been bit through. And the little one we use has been bit through. The fiberglass boat that we use has been bit through. They can uh, run the rope back, back up underneath, make you do enough flip-flop that uh, they can actually cause it to capsize. We are in the western part of Florida. Almost all housing projects are built around natural or artificial lakes or ponds like this one. And a lot of them are connected by underground storm drains. It makes a fabulous view and a wonderful playground for children and pets. But it's also a great hunting ground for alligators. When children play and when children get scared, they have a high-pitched uh, cry. Uh, that is also the same sound that the uh, alligator's prey makes when they're feeding. So when they hear the screaming, they look up and Oh, it's an animal in distress. I got a free meal. And here they come. 10 to 20 alligator attacks are reported in Florida each year. Since 1998, six of those have been fatal. That's about the same as bear attacks, if you add them up, in the entire North America. That's the king of our jungle in Florida, is the alligator. There is no predator that goes around preying on that alligator. Except for humans. These alligator trappers are here because someone complained about a dangerous gator roaming in the area. The catch of the day weighs over 500 pounds and is strong enough to rip off any body part within its reach. I ain't gonna hold him. Get that, get that, shut, kinky motor off. Turn your motor off, turn your motor off. All right. Now the real battle begins. Give me a dart pole, Charles. It's man against prehistoric beast. We got big boy. This is the wrong time of year to be jumping in the water with him right now. This is mate's season. I got the harpoon set up. Where do you want him? In the jaw. To get a hold of him, Chad will try to harpoon the alligator with a spear tied to a nylon rope. Make sure that line ain't nowhere around. I can't penetrate them. I have never had a gator do that. Never. Chad can't get his harpoon tip to pierce the body armor of the alligator, a sure sign that it's an old one, and therefore, a big one. That is our big one. 
He'll have to try and reel it in with the bait line that the gator swallowed. It may not be enough to hold it. Hold on, man. Let's take our breath. We're getting in trouble. Forward, that away. Reverse. Wide open reverse. Oh, you ain't going over there, buddy. That ain't gonna happen. Keep going. It is very critical when you get one this size. It's very dangerous. People's have been mauled, hurt seriously. I've been hurt seriously. Stand by. Normally, they would bring the alligator in the boat, right, the but this one weighs as much as a Harley Davidson motorcycle. Chad and Charles will have to drag it to shore, which makes them very vulnerable. This gator looks calm now, but if it tries to escape, it'll pull that small craft like a toy boat. And if it decides to seriously fight for its life, the alligator could rip at the aluminum boat, make it capsize, and then lock its jaws onto one of the trapper's legs, or worse, his head. Still cool. Fortunately for them, the alligator doesn't put up too much of a fight on the way to shore. It's saving his energy for later. Left. Now the most dangerous part begins. All right, come back here, man. It's good. I want, I want to touch on water still. This alligator may look slow and clumsy, but like all gators, it can sprint faster than any man, and its jaws are powerful enough to bite Chad's head off. Being out of the water, the alligator is at a disadvantage, but still represents a dangerous threat. The trappers need to make it completely harmless. Give me slack on that one. Tapping on it makes the gator open its jaws, and that's just what they need to get the rope out. Roll it over. Chad Thanks. closes the alligator's eyes to prevent any unexpected move on its part. Hold on. You want to go ahead and put it completely around his neck? Now I want you to tape as soon as I get him up. Sure. The alligator's jaws may be incredibly powerful when biting, but it doesn't have much strength for opening them. Exploiting this weak spot is the trapper's only chance. Chad holds its jaws up so Charles can tape it shut. Him, it feels real good. He's been a pain in the butt. But just when they think they have the situation under control, the gator decides to go overtime in its element. For Chad, that means a swim in an alligator-infested lake at feeding time. After a short struggle, though, they regain the upper hand. Chad Wright got severely bitten by an alligator a few years ago, but that's not going to stop him. He bit me. We killed him instantly because I couldn't get him off my hands. We had to sever his head. It still took Mike and Charles to pull that gator's mouth open to get my hand out of it. I've had, I've had uh, three fingers severed. I've had my thumb severed across the bottom. Man, be careful. If you're going to be a gator trapper, there's one thing that's going to happen. You're going to get bit. Might not be day, it might be 10 years down the road, but if you keep doing it, the odds are against you. You can't fall into a routine. You got to respect the animal for what he can do. A gator this size here has probably got between 4,500 to 6,000 pounds per square inch of his mouth when he bites down. So whatever he bites, he's usually going to take. The alligator has 80 teeth in its powerful jaws, and it will use every one of them to capture and crush anything it can. The alligator's jaws can develop almost half a ton of pressure per square centimeter. That's three times more than a grizzly bear or a lion. Charles has never been bitten by an alligator, and he would like it to stay that way. I don't think it's something I'm looking forward to. <laughs> Hopefully, it'll be a lot more later than sooner. See that little bump right there and right there? These two? From right there to the line in between the nose, for every inch, he's a foot. 
The biggest alligator ever caught in Florida was 14 foot 5 inches long. Right at 11 foot. Chad and Charles need a special permit for every alligator they trap to confirm that it's become a public nuisance. Out of 15,000 reports last year, more than 7,000 gators were trapped. Most were caught for their hide and meat, while the lucky ones, like this guy, were donated to nature parks and zoos. While Chad is busy finishing up with his 11-footer, a couple living next to a golf course calls 911. An alligator is stalking the neighborhood. Chad and Charles abandon the lakeside and arrive on the scene. Right now, it's in their flower bed, hissing at anyone who approaches. Even these cops are keeping their distance from the gator. Needless to say, the owners are terrified and won't come out till it's gone. If we have to stick him with a harpoon and catch him at night, he's going to be very aggressive. What they find is a six-footer with a nasty disposition. He may not be as imposing as the one they just caught, but what he lacks in size, he more than makes up for in fighting spirit. Carver, do you want to come home? Hold this or catch him. The animal responds to the attack by doing what's called a death roll. When they catch a prey, alligators will spin on themselves in an attempt to rip to pieces whatever they're biting on. The death roll can be more lethal than the bite itself. It's the highest adrenaline rush you have ever in your life experienced. Some people get scared. I've done it for a while, and I've learned to respect them and what they can do. Keep in mind that an alligator this size could easily sever his hand from his arm. There's been times I've, I've had to pull off and say, let's give it a minute and think about what we need to do. And every second and every, uh, every step you take is very critical. You gonna help me carry him? I'll carry the rope. He's small. And just when you yeah. think the game's over, <laughs> if this gator's jaws hadn't been taped, it would be chewing on Charles's face now. Finally, it's game over, for good. My neighbor said it was because I made brownies, and <laughs> he came to the door for brownies. So I don't... He was ran out. It, it, that same thing is what you did. There, there's no, there's no deterrent for. Yeah. Uh, nobody's gonna stop them from walking where they want to walk. Well, thank you guys. Did a great job. My neighbor said you. it was. My he was thank you. I think he uprooted one of your little plants. I tried to get him out of there quickly before he got that, it. Great job. Great job. Thank you. Great job. Yeah, he was knocking right on the front door. <laughs> thank you. Forty-three-year-old Charles Carpenter has been a licensed alligator agent for a year and a half. For many years, though, this owner of animal capture has been successfully catching armadillos, raccoons, and snakes. But now he wants to go after the big, nasty guys. And he's just about to get a handful in this peaceful neighborhood. To catch the bigger gators, Charles's weapon of choice is the snag hook, a three-inch hook tied to a fishing pole with a 200-pound test line. A 10-footer has been harassing the residents for a few weeks. This cannot go on any longer. An experienced fisherman, Ed has snag-hooked the menace on his first cast. The alligator takes a pause to catch his breath. A deadly mistake.
If this beast decides to attack instead of fighting against the pull of the rope, Charles will have no chance to escape its vicious bite. Now we're gonna tape his mouth up so nobody gets hurt, especially me. I wanna keep all my fingers. This alligator did not put up much of a fight. Others might not go down so easily, like this one that has been cruising the neighborhood for the last hour and scaring suburbanites. You have neighborhoods like this that back up on the uh, ponds. Alligators move around, and there's bound to be a conflict. After receiving a permit from the Fish and Wildlife Commission, Charles is here to take the threat away once and for all. The alligator's the one that's gonna lose out of this, so we're gonna try to pull him off the property before somebody gets hurt or an animal gets hurt. It's Charles's partner, Tom Mullen, who will take care of this one. This ex-Marine doesn't back off from anything. This time, he might even get a little help from the animal itself. But as soon as it feels the pull, the alligator suddenly changes its mind. Cruising the neighborhood was probably a lot more fun than this for the alligator. Hi. Doing this job, you always put yourself a little bit in danger. Um, but I, my main concern is not to uh, put another person in danger or uh, really harm the animal and attempt to catch it. Um, I would not want to wound an animal and have it get loose on me. Now that the party's over, it's looking for revenge, and it's getting closer and closer to it. If it hadn't been for Tom holding on tight to that rope, the alligator might have sunk his teeth into Charles's leg. Tom and Charles let the gator tire itself out by doing its death roll. With this crowd looking on, Charles simply can't use the same techniques as he would in the middle of the night on a dark lake. Unfortunately, it makes their job more difficult and dangerous. Blinding their opponent, however, is one strategy they can use. Without their usual weapons, it pretty much becomes a bare hand combat. They will use tape, though. The stronger, the better. Florida now has one fewer nuisance alligator, but there are plenty left. Once the emergency's over, Charles goes to meet Chad on an isolated lakeside. The reason they're here is because this farmer's cows keep disappearing, and he has spotted a couple of very big alligators near the cow's drinking spot. You got one in here about 13 foot and one about 11 foot that keeps coming up to the sides where the cows are laying down and resting at. And uh, right now is the time for them to be calving. So as soon as they calve, that draws the smell and the scent to the gator, and the gator comes up and gets the calf. Throw me a floating buoy, bud. Earlier in the day, they set rotted beef lungs as bait on three-inch hooks all over the lake. That's how they caught the first one. Only state-licensed trappers can set these kinds of baits. Alligators mostly hunt at night, and using these baits is Chad's favorite way of catching them. Throwing the buoy on the shore will let them know which ones and how many have been taken. Now, at nighttime, it's time to see what kind of monsters lurk below. I don't think he is on it. It's awful sight. I think the turtle got it. <laughs> the turtle was dragging it around. <laughs> no, I don't think that's a turtle. Charles is right. This is no turtle. 
Remember that this alligator could capsize the boat, and a midnight swim with this ferocious animal is the last thing the trappers want. Want some help? Keep that, keep tension on that when I tell you to. Chad has to be very careful, because a miss will just make the alligator even more excited. Hold on. Don't hit him yet. You ready? And difficult to handle. OK. Take him back to the gun, bring him first. Thanks to his death roll, this eight-footer is all tangled up in the rope. With the gator's mouth not yet taped, Chad has to work dangerously close to its jaws. They're just like a pit bulldog when, when they lock down. There, there is no unlocking them. Alligators pack a one-two punch in their bites. First, you get assaulted by the extreme trauma of the bite itself. Then, if not treated immediately, salmonella poisoning and rapid gangrene can develop due to all the bacteria they carry in their mouth. When they bite you, you're going to get an infection. It's a slight version of what a Komodo dragon's got. The most amazing thing about that animal is that is a garbage disposal. There is nothing it won't eat. There is nothing that we have not found in them. Found car tags, bottles, glasses. Found 47 golf balls in one before. They may have mighty jaws, but believe it or not, alligators can't chew. What they swallow, they swallow whole, so they often let a kill rot for a few days before eating it. The bacteria in their mouth accelerates that process of decomposition. An alligator in water is like a torpedo. It's deadly fast and can even lunge out of the water like a dolphin using its powerful tail. To untangle the gator, Chad has to make himself very vulnerable. If the gator pounces on him, it could bite his head off. That's what's always amazed me about them, is they, they've learned to adapt. I need some tape. They've learned to adapt to any kind of situation that they might be presented. I've called them an acid ponds before, where it almost ate the hide right off of them. It didn't bother the gator. With the capture of this female alligator, the night is almost over for Chad and Charles. Time to recharge the batteries and stock up on rotted beef lungs. Tomorrow night, they're going to Alligator Lake to measure themselves against aggressive 12-footers that are increasingly threatening the lakeside residents. The alligators are highly protected in Florida. Endangered just a few years ago, they have thrived under the state's protection. Today, there are over 1.5 million adult alligators in Florida. That's one big gator for every 10 residents of the Sunshine State. Here, the alligators are part of the landscape, so much so that people tend to forget that they represent a very dangerous threat. That's why they sometimes need to be taken out. What we try to do is maintain a healthy balance of alligators and try to keep people and alligators from interacting in inappropriate ways. Keep the people safe. The stats are probably way higher here. This is called Alligator Lake. There are so many big alligators that the residents have called the Fish and Wildlife Commission many times to complain. The FWCC has sent Agent Brad Clayton to investigate. In high season, it's not unusual for the commission to get 100 complaint calls per day. The FWCC is the state's most powerful law enforcement agency, 
above the DEA and even the FBI. These guys can search your house without a warrant if they suspect you of poaching. Sure enough, Agent Clayton doesn't have to look very hard to find big ones. FWCC agents do the investigations, but leave the trapping to the real pros. As soon as he gets back to the office, the permit is issued and sent to the trappers. It looks like Chad and Charles will have their hands full. And how do you go about finding alligators on such a big lake? Simple. You call them. Oh, we get him easy. He's swimming right to the boat. That's a good sign. We'll be there when we get there. Today, the atmosphere is festive. <laughs> Everybody's excited. Chad even brought his three-year-old daughter to give him a hand. But the jokes and the smiles are also because of frayed nerves. These guys know that they might be in for a rocky ride tonight. Chad's wife crosses her fingers because she knows what kind of beast her husband is after. There are reports of aggressive 12-footers in the area. The bait lines have been set. It's now time for the hunt. Alligator Lake is big, and Chad has no intention of being short-handed. But five grown men in a small boat make it that much more unstable. It's scary, and it's a little bit of a hairy ride, but it will uh, it'll hold them. They say it's unsinkable, but it is not guaranteed for gator bites. That's, that's where we put the one that he took. Capsizing in these waters would certainly make a few hungry beasts very happy. See, he was headed back over to this area. The buoy's got to be in there somewhere. Chad spotted a couple of big alligators earlier from the shore, and now a few buoys are missing. That's one, isn't it? That's one of our buoys. We didn't throw one there, though, did we? Yeah, I did, yeah. yeah. We did? One, two here and one there. There wasn't two here. But one plus one doesn't necessarily make two, as they're about to find out. Damn, you can see that thing still from over here. Yeah. Bring that boat up to the back of this boat. What they had not planned on was for one alligator to take two different baits. This one is obviously hungry and unimpressed by the three-inch hooks he swallowed. Those rotted beef lung appetizers have just made it hungrier, and it wants more. This might be a runner. For a few moments, this lake becomes the set for an alligator version of Jaws. The only difference is, this beast is for real. Gotta be a good gator, Charles. Yeah. The trappers follow the bright spot marking the buoys dragged by the gator. They use the small electric engine to sneak up as quietly as possible on the alligator. The roar of the power motor might just make it bolt for the bottom or the weeds. They need the gator out in the open, where it's much safer for them to work. Get between him and the weeds. They finally catch up with it after a half an hour of playing cat and mouse. Yeah, I thought somebody was going to be spotlighting. They have to secure its jaws as quickly as possible before it does any damage. It's definitely a very big gator, and it won't be easy. Ouch. Hey, hold him too, too tight. Too tight. Keep the slack, let him go out. Don't, don't hoist him. Let, let him just. The gator can't wait for this boat to capsize. And God knows how many hungry alligators are lurking just below. 
QB mode. Let go of the other rope. Right cheek, or left cheek. Be it adrenaline or the fact that two of these guys are rookies, but the trappers are way outside their safety zone. I right, watch that rope, because that dark rope will take off and take you. The alligator is firmly caught and furious. They must find a way to bring it in without going in themselves. Okay, we got about four people on one side. Two people get on that side. Good hit. Real good hit, Charles. Thank you. Oh, that's a perfect hit. Can't ask for a better shot. All right, when he wants to start biting, you gotta let him go, guys, when they grab the boat. He let him look good. Yep. The gator's now hooked. Chad has to clamp its jaws shut with the garage. Yeah, get him, get him down. And that means working inches away from instant amputation. This fierce alligator has to be put under control as soon as possible, because you just never know what it'll try to do next. The alligator is still in its element, and that spells danger for the trappers. They're too far out on the lake to drag it back to the boat ramp. We'll find us a dock. Their only option is the backyard of this luxurious lakeside house. No, Let's we're not, we're not gonna have any problem with these people. Don't worry about it. Take us and we can work it in their yard. Six, five, four, three, two. We need a spotlight. To pull this heavyweight creature out of the water, the harpoon line they're using just won't do. Charles has to use his lasso to help bring it up. Got it. Take him right there. Chad doesn't take any chances with the animal and tapes it right where it is in this rather precarious position. This one's heavier than they thought. I'm giving this some up. Luckily, the trappers have all the help they need. They want to uh, pull, pull on mine. I'll pull on the other one. In the end, four pairs of arms are barely okay. enough to bring the alligator out. Okay, pull them up. Its days of terrorizing local residents are now definitely over. With the owners of the house looking on, Charles tapes the alligator's eyes to calm it down. And Chad prepares it for transport. For the trappers, catching big ones is not only more exciting, it's a question of money. Their only source of income is the profit they make from selling the hide and the meat. A 10-footer may be worth anywhere from $200 to $500. The hide itself can be worth 45 bucks per foot. 910. I have so many big ones in here. And they, every time What's I come that? in the yard to work, they're right here staring at me. Yeah, what we're working on, we're going to see if we can get a few out tonight. Is that a male or female? Got to buy them a drink. <laughs> you know how you tell a male from a female? How? Yeah, you stick Watch your this. finger up in there. Roll over. I can hear it, right? <laughs> It's gotta be a female, I ain't listening. <laughs> <laughs> they can afford to make jokes now that their catch has been made harmless. Charles quickly sobers up, though. He knows they were lucky with this big one. Charles is the official alligator control agent for Pinellas County, a vastly residential area located on Tampa Bay. Each year, his company, Animal Capture, catches approximately 300 nuisance alligators in this area. Here, alligators live literally in people's backyards. That's way too close for comfort for anyone or any pet. To an alligator, a dog looks like a, a, a raccoon with a bad hair day, and they'll, you know, they come after them. Animal Capture. This is exactly what happened in a nearby neighborhood. A woman just called to say she spotted something that would appall any canine lovers, a gator with a dog in its jaws. 
Charles and his crew are immediately on the move. As soon as the gator spots Charles, it runs for the storm drain, leaving its lunch to the flies. Get the white pole running down the sides. This might be the only one going to it. Tom is somewhat surprised by this unusual method, but that doesn't stop him from putting his head down into the manhole right where the gator can reach him. Getting the alligator out of its hiding spot won't be easy, but Charles and Tom are determined to do whatever it takes. This gator is already attacked once. It will no doubt attack again. Being in the sewer system, it could travel and show up anywhere. Next time, it might not be a dog it's after. The alligator is a top predator in Florida, so anything that looks like their normal uh, their normal food source or game is uh, it's a target. Uh, you have children that are, you know, about the size of their their prey, and it disappears. Unfortunately, the pole doesn't do the trick. Charles decides to pull out all the stops to get that dog eater out of the storm drain. What the pole didn't do, the TNT might. Yeah. Yeah. They're hoping the blast will drive the alligator back out. They try again. And again. Stand, stand by. Apparently, this animal has seen a few wars. A lot of energy. A lot of energy indeed, but the gator wasn't impressed. They decide to stop before someone calls 911 about these blasts. It looks like the residents around here will have to live with this predator for a little while longer. No swimming, no fishing, and watch out for your dogs. There's not much more that uh, you can say about what you need to do around an alligator. A bit like this alligator, Charles Carpenter is not easily intimidated. An Air Force veteran who spends his days chasing dangerous animals, he doesn't unwind by watching TV or reading a book. He's more of a white knuckle ride type of guy. And he gets plenty of that a few minutes from home at the Universal Orlando Resort. He and his wife, Jolyn, have been members of the American Roller Coaster Enthusiasts Association for many years, riding everywhere in the country. For Charles, theme parks are the perfect distraction. But wait, doesn't this look like work? That's true. At work or at play, this man's passion are beasts with big teeth. The minute he's home from the theme park, He's back in his own playground. Charles and Ed have a license to catch a 10-footer that's been very aggressive with the people living around this small lake. It's Charles' third visit here, and he has yet to spot the animal. This one's smart enough to lay low when the fuzz is around. At least until now. To your left. See him? OK. Want to be a best? So we should go up in there. They try to sneak up on the alligator rather than approach it directly. Ed tries a first cast but misses the mark. It's now Charles' turn. And he scores a bullseye. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Move, 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 move. They must cast the hook just over the alligator, snag it while reeling the line back in, and drag it to shore. Drag it over to your right if you can. It's just yeah, like yeah. fishing, except that you must hit the fish with the lure. Oh, he's still way out there. Yep. He's going further out, too. This one's hooked. Now the tough part begins. Hop around the fence, and you're going to have to move on down. A hand-to-hand -hand combat with a nine-footer on his turf. This alligator definitely has the upper hand. It looks to be about 15, 20 foot deep. Charles and Ed are in a really tight spot. They have snag-hooked a big one, but basically have no room to work. 
Get yours up in the air before we lose the pole. The steep slope increases the risk of slipping and falling into the water with the alligator, a potentially fatal mistake. They need all their concentration. I need y'all to stay very quiet, if you would, please. And perfect teamwork if they want to get the animal out of the water. Let me hold both of them now. And uh, set. The fishing poles are too flexible. They need a lasso to bring the gator up onto the grass. Okay. So Ed catches his breath while Charles fetches the rope. Gotcha. The snag hook has probably hurt the alligator. <laughs> this injured predator is now a deadly threat for the people around the lake. And these trappers. It has to be taken out. Ready? Oh, Joining forces against such a big opponent is the trapper's only chance. To lasso the gator, Charles has to put his foot into the water, into the enemy's territory. If the alligator suddenly decides to go for Charles's ankle, he would probably get its snack. Finally, the gator is lassoed. The final confrontation can begin. But two grown men plus a big, angry gator is a tight fit for this small lawn. 3,000 pounds of pressure inside there. If he bites down on you, he'll crush bones. Charles finally manages to gain the upper hand on his adversary. Ready? Ready? But once again, Charles gets a bit too close to the animal. He has never been bitten before. Will today be the day? Nope. Maybe tomorrow. Okay. Okay. The residents can finally breathe easily again. Their tormentor is now history. All you had to do was come outside and it would come over to you, which means obviously somebody's been feeding it. If you get near an alligator that's afraid of people, normally they'll leave. If the alligator doesn't appear to be afraid of people um, when they're in the immediate proximity, then you can, should probably give us a call and let us know. Feeding alligators is one of the best ways to get into trouble. They don't make the difference between a sandwich and your leg. Most of the lakes in, in the county we work on or work in uh, they have alligators in them, and they stay in the bottom, and they wait. That's, that's what their job is. That's what their skill is. It's just they're ambush hunters. Wait for an opportunistic uh, time, animal or a person or a fish comes by or even a turtle, and they just grab it, and it's like, okay, good snack. No wonder you can get fined up to $1,000 if you get caught feeding one. Never feed alligators or feed any wildlife near the water. Avoid swimming in areas where there's a lot of vegetation. And don't take your pets or your small children in places where alligators are known to feed or be. With their catch firmly tied up, Charles and Ed drag it back to the trailer, leaving behind another satisfied and reassured customer. This one won't do any more damage. Well, almost none. The million and a half adult alligators in Florida are increasingly cornered by urban development. Ugly encounters are bound to become more frequent. As long as we keep encroaching upon their habitat, they have nowhere left to go. Yeah, that first come, first serve doesn't apply. The locals may be glad to see that big gator gone for good, but they shouldn't kid themselves. Their peace of mind won't last long. As soon as we take this one out, now it's empty. Uh, it has a food supply, so another one's gonna move in. We'll probably be out here probably two more months, taking another one out. Next stop, Lake Seminole, south of Clearwater.
Numerous aggressive alligators are making this area extremely unsafe. Any alligator that comes up around people, it's our responsibility to take away. Residents have had enough. They quickly find one of them, casually cruising the canal in search of its next meal. Ed tries his best to snag hook the alligator to shore. But with all the docks and boats, it has many great hiding places. The gator knows someone's after its hide and it won't give up easily. Here again, their best bet is to try and sneak up on the alligator. The day's been long and the two trappers are exhausted. The gator keeps getting away, but they have to keep their concentration to a maximum. Sloppy trappers are an alligator's favorite prey. After many unsuccessful tries, Ed finally manages to catch the elusive gator. Don't be fooled by its size. This alligator's jaw is much bigger than a dog's and stronger than a pit bull's, and it's fighting for its life. Even with a smaller gator, teamwork has to be flawless. The slightest misunderstanding can have serious consequences. And you always make sure you know where your partner is. Make sure he knows what he's doing, he knows what you're doing. So there's never any miscommunication when you're sitting there with your finger in his mouth and the other guy's saying, oops, I didn't know you were wanting me to hold on to him. As the day winds down, Charles and this camera crew are about to come face to face with a rather unexpected threat. If I wasn't a nice guy, I'd grab you by the shirt and I'd beat the tar out of you. Charles is face to face with someone who likes alligators but who doesn't much like alligator trappers. That's why you just come out. We don't have the information. The information we have is alligator this size and this canal has to be taken out. That's it. If there's five of them, we'll take five of them out. How do you know it was that alligator? If there's five of them, we'll take five of them out. Surprisingly, the people trappers have to deal with sometimes pose a bigger threat than the animals themselves. That, that, that's not right, because that animal <coughs> First off, I've lived here for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And you know about what this animal does? I swim with them. OK. Now, if she has seen if me in you the water, watch it 24 hours a day yeah, well, yeah. and know that it never does anything, right. I've seen this alligator in there. You can watch him 24 hours a day, then you can say what he does and what he doesn't do. Otherwise, you can't. I've seen the can't. alligator before, and he's not <laughs> harmed anybody, he or she. Okay. <laughs> It happens a lot. Actually, the ones that threaten us are the ones we uh, fear the least. Uh, if they're talking that much, uh, they're probably not going to do anything. The ones you have to worry about are the ones that don't say anything. Uh, you know, then you, get, you need to wonder how far they'll go. The alligator agents always operate within the law. Trappers like Charles represent the Fish and Wildlife Commission, the most powerful law enforcement agency in Florida. If he decides to use your backyard to trap a gator, he does not need your permission. This woman certainly won't stop them from using her backyard. She called to report a nuisance alligator that's been coming out every time the children are out playing. Gotcha. This small alligator can go unnoticed by parents, and unfortunately, it's not scary enough to frighten the children away. But given the chance, it could seriously injure a child, or this man. Once in a while, Charles's wife, Jo Lynn, tags along for the ride. 
This computer programmer is getting used to her husband being an alligator trapper, even if at first she was a bit reluctant. Are you nuts? <laughs> that's what went through my mind. Are you nuts? Well, okay, if that's what you want to do, I'm not going to be involved. And here I am. <laughs> Today, she won't hesitate to pitch in if Charles needs help, whatever kind of beast he might be facing. A lot of times, my job is uh, crowd control. People want to know, why are you taking the alligator? Uh, or, oh, can I pet it? And things like that. A lot of times, uh, my job ends up being to keep people away so he can do his job and catch the alligator. He's small enough where you can hold him if you want. Catching a small gator gives Charles a chance to teach kids and their parents about alligators. Oh my God. They're showing less and less fear. You know, they'll just come This one right came straight over to us. Exactly, and we're not, we don't ever, ever feed them. They get to pet a live one under the supervision of a trained professional. Alligators kiss real good. Okay. Maybe I want to kiss an alligator. No? No alligator kisses today? The thing about alligators is they're not malicious. They're, they're just efficient. Uh, they do what they're here to do, and that's to weed out the population of anything that's around them, including people. Hopefully, these kids will grow up respecting this predator and avoiding it as much as possible. But when things go wrong, trappers like Charles Carpenter and Chad Wright will always take the call. We got an emergency call. Get Joellen on the phone, Fish and Wildlife. We got an emergency to go on. 